jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of Angela Kinsey and the Hi. Gay Men's Chorus, where is the bathroom? <laughs> That did happen tonight. And the person that was supposed to sing solo didn't show up, so then I, he just asked me to do it. So I had to stand in front and do a thing. Everybody has to be prepared for the same. They all have no music because you never know at the time that you're gonna do it. I guess that's what happened. With the you have to play it up. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, so, what would you do? Um, what would you do, for example, for example, if uh, you absolutely want to sing a solo song and the musical does not want to prove the song that you have proposed to him? Unfortunately, in those situations, the artistic director has a final decision, so we just don't get to, don't get to sing it, you know? Maybe, and then maybe we replace the director, okay? mm -hmm. but at the time, maybe we don't get to perform it. So, I, you are an overall artist, and uh, would you uh, rather do drag performances? Let's say, if you have to choose between traveling around the world, on a, on a world tour with the Gay Choir of Los Angeles, or doing the RuPaul Drag Race, or any kind of drag race, so what would you choose if you have to choose between the two? I would say for me, actually, I would choose, I would choose the chorus, because with the chorus I could do the drag thing if I need to, because they let, they let us do that, for one. And two, they've been there with my support when I needed them in life, and I wouldn't turn my back on them, you know, before I wouldn't anything. Mm -hmm. So you say you would say that the soloist and the choir comes first, and then the, the drag performance comes second. Well, I would say that the two can be married because, of course, they have since the gay men's course, they have the opportunity to merge the two. So I would. And for today's segment, we have the very talented, admirable, super exuberant uh, da Tara Newhall, also called in private life. Uh, uh, Thomas Franklin. We're very honored to have him for the final of documentary class, documentary storytelling. And the first question for Thomas today here, this beautiful Getty Villa in Malibu, uh, will be opening up for the first time on international cast television is quite a big deal. We all know that. Especially um, when opening up means talking about attitudes and opinions of an entire community, like the LGBTQ community could be, right? Right. Now, for example, is there a new hall, which is your artistic name in drag, which I love this name, it's really, really fun, mm -hmm. um, pretend to be comfortable in her own skin? Is she truly comfortable? Or she just sometimes maybe pretending to be comfortable? Well, in fact, she's opened the, the conversation talking about her sexuality, gender, within the traveler community, which means they're traveling from state to state. How? How important is that to her? And is she comfortable more now? Or, or do you think there's, there's still a lot of work to be done? Or it's a thing of the past in your own state, uh, the state of Kansas? Or do you think it's still an ongoing conversation and debate? Well, um, in the beginning, I would say that, and for a long time, I would say up until very recently, Tara was much more of a pretender to keep it real than she was you know, a fully you know, realized, confident character. I mean, it was easy to pretend behind the lens of a camera, you know, at home, that I was one way. And that I had all this confidence and I could do all these things because, um, because I didn't have to, the whole world didn't actually have to see the character in the beginning. Like, I brought her out in little bits and pieces, you know, did little things here and there around town. And only my friends on social media really got a chance to see it. And so it was easy to play it's easy to play just a competent role because it was like I was an actor, I was performing. It's what I'd been doing forever, so it wasn't a big of a deal. But I kept it from you know many of the people back home because I am from Kansas and it's a pretty conservative place. And I had a lot of friends and a lot of family there that I just didn't know how they would react with it. And I didn't know how comfortable I was. I was with actually bringing that character out there, but it was something I really, really enjoyed doing. And so I just didn't know. But then I started to get a little bit more, you know, I don't know, recognition for the character. And the more I got recognition for it, the more confidence started to build up within myself doing it to the point to where I actually, I don't know, to the point to where I actually, the confidence that she saw me like 
try to portray on through the pictures and through my videos, it, it was actually something that, that had become part of who I really was. At last, we were gone. It was for answering our first question. I know it's not easy, but you know, this here we are by Venus, but it's beautiful, phenomenal statue which reminds us all of the Roman Empire, of the Roman statues that we can see in the Vatican in Rome, and, and it's really it must be like home here at the Getty Villa in Malibu. Now, really, how comfortable do you feel talking about your home, about your upbringing, about how you grew up in the state of Kansas, and uh, how comfortable do you are you talking today about the economic hardship or obstacles or educational background or family and how you grew up? Because we're all curious about how to know how we can overcome those obstacles in life. You know, I would be lying if I said that it's it's completely easy to talk about everything from my past, like my economic hardships or what it was growing up, you know, where I was from, because we didn't have a whole lot growing up. And not that that has made me any less of a person than anybody else, but I am a member of like the gay, <laughs> gay West Hollywood, gay LA. And it's a city that has, has really been known, as long as I've lived here, as being pretty judgmental in regards to like age and economic, you know, just your economic levels of income and just, just all of that. And so I've done a lot in the last several years to like pull myself up and I'm really proud of what I've done to get to where I'm at now, because I didn't come from a whole lot. But that being said, it doesn't make it that easy to always talk about it. To some people, I'll, to anyone outside of the gay community, I'll be honest, anyone outside of the gay community, I feel like they applaud it. I think that they they see where I've been and they know what I've done and they're really proud of it. But I'm starting to get to a point where I genuinely just don't care what they, the other people in West Hollywood think, because they're not making me, they don't make my happiness and I'm, I'm really starting to realize that. I don't know what's happened in the last year. Maybe it's been during the pandemic when I've had a lot of time with myself, but I've started to realize that you don't know how long you're going to No one knows how long you're going to be here and that they've got to live. We've got to live our own lives and be happy for ourselves. And I don't care if someone wants to look down on me because they my, because my dad was a janitor, maybe growing up and my mom was just a teacher. I'm doing what I want to do in life now and I'm succeeding. I'm getting to be, on like, some of the world's greatest stages, performing with some of the greatest people, you know, possibly on the precipice of like, like you know, realizing another dream that, I'm a, that I've always wanted to do in performing. And I just don't care. Like, maybe I wasn't rich growing up. Maybe I wasn't, didn't have the best clothes or best cars or even the parents with the best jobs. But that has not made me anything other than who I am today. Like, it's, it's done nothing but help me appreciate what I've got today. And hopefully we're getting at a point here in LA or just, at least within the gay community, where that's not the most important thing in defining how cool we are or how important we are as a person, because it really doesn't make who we are other than to make us stronger, at least for me. I can't speak for, I can't speak for anybody else. I don't want to speak for myself. But I'm really getting to a point where as soon as I stopped caring what other people thought about that stuff, I started to be happy. And that's, it's funny, happiness seems to be a lot more important than money to me at this okay. point, or how much money I've not gotten. Not able know, to be open or accepted within your community can take a huge toll on your mental health, right? We all know that. This is a huge toll. We all struggle with that. Now, especially on young people, okay? More like to take their own lives, this is, which is really tragic and sad. And how is that compared to their straight peers? How did you deal with that? And which memories do you have from living in not so good circumstances or in not so good neighborhood when you were struggling to come out and to really struggle with your mental health. Can you describe those moments? Uh, can I describe those moments? Right here? Uh, no, yeah, I can describe those moments. I went through it just like everybody else. I had a lot of those moments of weak mental, you know, a lot of, a lot of mental, <laughs> my mental health wasn't always at its best. I didn't deal with it the best. I dealt with it like a lot of people in LA. You know, because I was a danger to myself. I, I kept trying to say I wasn't, 
the clear light was. I mean, I just wasn't happy. And that was the lowest point that I would say that I ever got. Um, I didn't know that I'd ever get past that. Didn't know that I could ever feel okay again, or that I would be able to work myself past it. I mean, the guilt of trying, you know, of everything that happened, as low as everything had gotten, with all the potential that I'd had. Um, and I just, I didn't know if I could get past it. But luckily, I did have a good support system. Like, like I said earlier, I had the course, Game Men's Course of LA, who a lot of the boys in there were, they gave me the support I needed to help me get out of that and pull it through.